Energy is a wonderful thing. It allows us to light our homes, cook food, and watch YouTube rather than read things ourselves. But you may have noticed recently that the price for this energy has gone up. Gone are the days where a mere £2 coin would see your gas meter through the week. Instead, technology can show us in real time just how costly things are becoming. And why is this? Well, there are lots of reasons, and many of them are either buried in government reports or otherwise literally unusable by people of my demographic. But nonetheless, here is an attempt to explain them in a hopefully not too dull format to fit into your busy schedule. Trust me, this will save you some time. But where to begin? Well, let's start by blaming our problems on other countries. Here in the UK, we're blessed with the ability to plunder the North Sea for precious fossil fuels so we can burn them to heat our homes and watch Pointless. However, that's not nearly enough to keep us going, and so we also need to buy gas off the Norwegians, who are also plundering the North Sea? Just a slightly different part. Now, as the gas pipelines between the UK and Norway aren't really going anywhere, it makes sense to have fixed prices and long-term contracts. So far, so good. But combined, that's only enough to provide about three quarters of British demand. So where does the rest come from? Well, largely from boats in the form of liquid natural gas. This is basically normal gas, but made so cold that it turns into a liquid and shrinks. This makes it more economical to pour into massive tankers and ship around the world, rather than build and use stupid static pipelines. But because boats are famously more mobile than big metal pipes, they can go basically anywhere, normally to the highest bidder paying on the spot, which is the difference between a spot market and a hedged market, which is a pretty big problem. See, LNG is one of the fastest growing commodities on Earth, and so gas prices can increasingly jump all over the place depending on who is willing to pay what. This means that roughly one quarter of British gas supplies can now be influenced by any country in the world. For example, China. One of the main reasons we're seeing these price spikes is because China is the world's largest importer of LNG, and also happens to be going through a post-pandemic boom, which means gas demand has risen sharply and it has to come from somewhere. At this point, supply and demand dictates the rest, as countries bid more to get their hands on the supply, and those costs are passed on to the consumer. Okay, but like, why is LNG going up now? Especially in Europe, where pipeline gas has been around for so long. Well... So, due to, uh, issues, Russia and Europe aren't exactly the best of chums right now, and it's even been suggested that Gazprom, Russia's gas company, has been pressured into only meeting its minimum supply obligations to Europe, withholding any extra for political leverage. Now, is this true? I have no idea. But the fact is that Europe hasn't received as much gas as it would have liked, and <clears throat> other factors are making minds in government think this supply won't be skyrocketing anytime soon. Therefore, Europe has to both ask Norway for more and also turn to our old friend liquid natural gas, which, again, increases competition and pushes the price up worldwide. This is why, even though Britain barely gets any gas directly from Russia, shenanigans over here affect smart meters over here. The problem is that, unlike other European countries, the UK has very few reserves of gas, one of the most important resources in modern society, you know, just in case. Traditionally being a producer and exporter, the UK only has enough storage to last about two weeks, whereas some countries have enough to last closer to three months. This means the UK can't burn reserves to soften volatile markets, and instead has no choice but to pay the market rate on the spot. Or, to put it another way, it's the difference between having a tiny petrol tank and filling up at a motorway service station, versus having a large enough tank to make it to your local Asda superstore. It also means that if you have to use more gas in the, uh, hotter months, there's even less waiting in storage for when the weather gets colder. Which brings us to... So, the UK's main electricity sources are currently gas and wind, which, in 2020, both produced about 38 and 25% of electricity, respectively. That's pretty good. However, as we've been talking about for literally this entire video so far, gas isn't such a great bet right now. But what about wind? Well, on particularly blustery days, renewables can provide over 50% of UK energy. So, when high winds are expected, some power plants go offline and schedule maintenance, because they won't be needed, right? Foreshadowing is a device that is used to hint at events later on in the story. So, how has wind performed recently? 
Well, in the summer of 2021, when wind speeds are expected to be at their highest, speeds actually dropped to their lowest level this century. And of course, when the wind drops, it needs to be replaced with something. But in the UK, there aren't really many options. Coal is being phased out for how badly it pollutes everything, and nuclear has… not aged well. Output recently fell by 11%, purely because the plants are so old, they increasingly have to be powered down for safety. Adding in the fact that half the UK's nuclear capacity will be decommissioned by 2025, this will only become less of an option going forwards. So apart from our pathetic attempts to use solar and thermal energy, that only leaves… oh. Right. And to make matters worse, with many plants facing both maintenance and an ongoing pandemic, finding plants which could be fully operational at relatively short notice, and you know, with increasing fuel prices, led to facilities charging more for their power, which again, got passed on to the consumer. So all of this may have left you thinking, well, okay, but there must be a plan for all of this. Surely the government are going to do something? You see, in the centre of these issues is a hidden third issue, and that's that the UK energy sector is… well, it's not great. I originally had a 5 minute rant about the economics of the UK energy sector, but we both know that you don't want to listen to that and I don't want to edit it. So the short version is that in 2014, the energy market was relaxed which made it easier for new energy providers to pop up. But unfortunately, in their quest to be cool and cheap, they ended up either not having enough cash in the bank, or not hedging for far enough in the future. This meant they had to buy grid energy at the inflated spot rate, rather than having contracts from when things were cheaper. And to make matters worse, the UK has a price cap system, where the Office of Gas and Electrical Markets caps how much providers can charge, Stop right there, criminal scum. which sounds like a great idea until companies start selling energy for less than they paid. This caused dozens of energy suppliers to go bankrupt, their debts went, uh, here, and their customers instead got lumped with high tariffs from more cautious providers who have far less interesting logos. But the best part is that the price cap is now pretty much being doubled, but most of the competition has already gone bust, meaning there's even less incentive for providers to outcompete each other. But what to do? It's not like the government can just raise taxes on, for example, Shell or BP's £40 billion profits, right? <laughs> no, you silly livers! <laughs> no! I mean, I do kind of get it, the argument is that taxing these companies would stop them investing more in green energy. But, hmm. So basically yeah, no matter which end of the political spectrum you're on, whatever the government does will probably leave you unhappy. So that's why the UK is in a bit of an energy crisis. Will it get better? Well, I don't think the price cap is coming down anytime soon, and I hope you didn't expect more than a £200 repayable loan from the government, because that's basically all you're getting. Lucky for you though, some providers have given out free advice for how to save energy if you're a bit strapped for cash, such as, uh, replacing all of your light bulbs with LEDs, draft proofing your entire house, or just, uh, cuddle your pets to keep warm. So I hope that gives you some reassurance. Anyway. Will the UK use this as an opportunity to increase green infrastructure? Will energy prices ever come back down to where they used to be? Will big oil companies offer to sacrifice their profits for the sake of good PR? I don't know, but I'm sure someone will be happy to argue with you about it in the comments. <laughs>